Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy. We're getting ready to start a new aspect of the slide rule, and that is the trigonometry functions. But before we do, I thought it might be a good idea to just kind of go over high school trigonometry on one page of paper. So, let's get started. Trigonometry is the study of angles, and specifically the study of triangles. So a good place to start would be, well, how do I identify the parts of a triangle? Well, let's go ahead and go through them. Now, a triangle, of course, is three angles, and each angle and each point is defined by a capital letter, A, B, and C. C is generally the right angle, and that's what this little box denotes. B, on the other hand, is not a right angle, and that's why it's got an arc on it. Then we name the sides using lowercase letters named after the angle opposite them. So the the side that's opposite angle C is lowercase c. Opposite angle B is lowercase b. And opposite angle A is lowercase a. So that's how we name triangles. Now let's look at some definitions or functions in trigonometry. There are really only three that we need to worry about. The first one is called the sine. And if we look at angle B here, the sine would be the opposite side over the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is the side that's opposite the right angle. The cosine is what's called the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, and the tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent side. Well, how do we remember these things? Uh, some people use the term SOHCAHTOA, sine opposite hypotenuse, cosine adjacent hypotenuse, tangent opposite over adjacent. I like to look at it another way. When you're angle B, you can see your girlfriend over here. You see the sine. However, you cohabitate with your wife, and she co-signed your mortgage. And if your girlfriend and your wife ever get together, they're going to tangle. And then when they're done, they're both going to turn on you and tear you up. That's the tangent. Now next we have something called identities in trigonometry, and these are the relationships between functions. So for example, the sine of angle alpha is the cosine of 90 degrees minus angle alpha. Likewise, the cosine of angle alpha is the sine of 90 degrees minus angle alpha. And the tangent is the sine over the cosine. Now another very important identity is called a Pythagorean identity, and that is that the sine square of alpha plus the cosine square of alpha equals the square of 1. And those are the main identities that you need to worry about. Next we have the laws. And the laws are formulas to help you find the sides or the angles of a triangle if you know some of them. It'll help you find the other ones. The first one is the law of sines. And that is that side A over the sine of angle A equals side B over the sine of angle B equals the side C over the sine of angle C. Now, the law of cosines, which is what we're going to do next, should be pretty familiar to you because if you go right here, you have the Pythagorean formula. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Well, what if it's not a right triangle? You need to put a little correction in, and that is minus 2 times AB cosine C. Minus 2 times both sides multiplied together times the cosine of the angle that's opposite the sign you're looking for. Another way that you may see it written sometimes, and a way I like to write it quite a bit, is that cosine c equals a squared plus b squared minus c squared over 2ab. And finally, we've got a couple of honorable mentions here. A unit circle is a circle of radius 1. The 1 has no units. It's whatever unit you want it to be. Now, the small angle approximation if we go below about 5.7 degrees, we can estimate the sine and the tangent of that angle simply by calculating the number of radians in the number of degrees. And finally, we have something called a radian. A radian is an angle that's, that carves off a portion of the circumference equal to the radius. So this segment right here equals the radius. And a radian is 57.3 degrees about 10 times the small angle, and there are 360 degrees in 2 pi radians. Now to be honest with you, if you have a good working knowledge of the things that are on this single sheet of paper, 
uh, this is probably going to get you a B in high school trigonometry. If you want an A, I'll need another sheet of paper, but just one more. So go through these, think about them a little bit, and next time I see you, we'll be starting on the trigonometric functions of the slide rule. So this is Bob the Science Guy. Follow me for more. I'll see you again soon. Take care.